It probably wouldn't surprise you if I told you that the roots of most popular Christian holidays have little to nothing in common with actual Christianity. Now, 50 years ago, that would have been a huge shock. But today, it's practically common knowledge. Christmas borrows many of its customs from the ancient rites of Saturnalia and Mithraism. Easter and its egg-laying rabbits have a lot in common with an ancient fertility goddess. And Halloween is, well, it's Halloween. And the list goes on. The question we face today is not one of where these holidays came from, but of whether or not God approves of where they came from. Does God really care about pagan origins as long as we change the day to be about Him? Yes, a thousand times over, yes. Now, during the events of the Old Testament, as God was bringing His chosen people into the promised land of Canaan, He gave them a strict warning in Deuteronomy 12. When the Lord your God cuts off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess, Take heed to yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? I also will do likewise. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. For every abomination to the Lord which he hates they have done to their gods. For they burn even their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. Now God tells us in no uncertain terms that he hates the way pagan religions worship their false gods, going so far as to call their practices abominations. What do you think the chances are that he appreciates it when we rebrand those same practices as Christian and then tell him, but don't worry, this time we're doing it for you. God goes on to warn us in the last verse in this chapter. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it nor take away from it. So there's a reason you'll never find holidays like Christmas or Easter commanded in the pages of the Bible. Neither God the Father nor Jesus Christ want us celebrating these repackaged pagan holidays in their honor. What you will find, however, is something much better. A list of holy days ignored by the world but proclaimed by God as the feasts of the Lord, not the feasts of the Jews not the feasts of the Old Testament. These are holy days that the creator of the universe calls my feasts. These days teach us how God wants to be worshiped. And more than that, they each tell an important part of a powerful story. The story of God's plan for the entire human race, past, present, and future. They tell the story of why evil exists in the world, and what God is going to do about it. They tell the story of why you were born and what you have the potential to become. They tell the story of how one day God will wipe away death, sorrow, and crying from the world. And they tell you how to be there when that happens. Well, what story do the holidays of mainstream Christianity tell? That Christ was born? That Christ was resurrected? And then what? Well, there are valentines, there are ghouls and goblins, there are shamrocks, but none of it really makes any sort of cohesive sense. There is no story to be told here, only a confusing collection of repurposed and rebranded pagan traditions that God hates. If you're looking for purpose, if you're looking for answers, if you're looking for lessons, if you're looking for something worth holding on to, then the feasts of God tell the most important story ever told. And that story starts with Passover. To learn about Passover and its vital role in the plan of God, click next to continue watching this series. For further reading, be sure to download our free booklet, From Holidays to Holy Days, God's Plan for You.